Hey everyone, it's Dawn here. I just wanted to take a moment to share this special place that was such a surprise. I am um, dog sitting, house sitting finally again um, and uh, expected I'm actually not too far from where I've been staying during the whole lockdown thing. Um, so um, here in the Atlanta area and I was actually going to a more crowded part of the city. I'm in the middle of the suburbs but as is always the case <laughs> there is a surprise waiting for me wherever I'm led and um, I'm going to share some of that in this video as I talk to you. I'm going to share some of the um, backdrop of uh, what is this little hidden gem of this forest. We are in the midst of some very trying times where the energy is just all over the place um, and where emotions are at the surface for so many people for a variety of reasons. The obvious things that are happening collectively um, in our society the exposure of things, the breakdown of systems, the injustices that are apparent, the uh, various uh, viewpoints on what needs to happen next. And in all of this, it is so important for each one of us to find ways to come back to center and remain there. It's a blessing, um, such a blessing. And so my heart is feeling very um, happy at that and in its creation zone in many ways. And yet it's also, I feel that in this video I, or audio that I'm making for you, I want to share something that's heavy on my heart about the collective situation that we find ourselves in. I don't exactly know how this is gonna come out and I feel, I felt it was important to speak though. Um, it's Saturday evening, June 13th, and tomorrow is Sunday, and as many of you know, I come from a Christian background, and I am also, I, I'm from the Deep South, um, I'm currently back in Georgia, even though I've traveled a lot, and I grew up, um, I was very blessed and fortunate because I grew up um, moving quite a bit, and so I saw, um, I was exposed to various cultures and, and ways of seeing and and it was, it's been such a gift in my life. And yet, at the same time, you know, we would come back to um, where my parents' families were here in Georgia. And so that I saw that contrast. I saw that juxtaposition of various um, types of uh, cultures. And, and I, saw, I also saw that in many other ways beyond the issue of, of race. But obviously, that is what is at play in our world right now and because of that I, I just feel a need to speak to it briefly. I can't speak to it in depth at the moment because my own uh, I, I think that you know there are so many things at play and, and I'm, I'm you know in my own space with all of that and with many other things and so so I've been a little bit to be honest I've been a little bit bewildered by various uh, things that I've seen people say, uh, I, some of it I just outright disagree with. Um, some of it um, I actually agree with in principle, but I feel it's a bit by bypassing what is real. And at the same time, I myself have experienced the, the backlash, um, people, other people who are triggered I don't know why. I, sometimes I just think I'm an easy target, <laughs> but um, I don't know why. But um, but you know when I um, use my voice to to speak out and say something, and then someone else comes back with you know whatever it might be. Um, but even so, you know this is it's a heightened um, uh, emotional state right now for all, for all of us. And what I would like to contribute from my heart is that it's not enough to simply write off because there are uh, perhaps um, things happening that are uh, manipulated or controlled. And I do believe that that is happening. I, I do agree with that part. Um, but because just because that's happening does not mean that there is not a need for 
equality, true equality, which we do not have on this planet in any possible way, um, at, at least not collectively. Um, there is a need for that and for justice and for mercy and for compassion for all of us. And we start that for having compassion with ourselves. And so that's where I'm, I'm sitting right now. And I'm also speaking in the ways that I know to speak. And, you know, uh, as I said, I come from a Christian background and, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people will go and sit in a church and some good things will be said. And, and then a lot of people will, you know, voice their opinion that this is, you know, that there's something else happening behind the scenes, which um, that general, general thing I absolutely agree with. <laughs> um, and then there's a divergence there in terms of what is actually happening. But um, I, I do believe that the majority of people who are speaking about this are speaking from to the best of their ability, a place that's genuine, but, and I believe that most of the people that, you know, will do some healing with regard to this issue, you know, with themselves and, and, or most of the people who, you know, whatever they might do, whatever action they might do, uh, take to be supportive and be a part of the change. And most of the people that actually don't know what to do and go sit in, in church tomorrow or wherever else they, they might gather um, are, are, are well-intentioned. And we all know that sometimes the intention is not enough and that it's a time to really bring our creative focus to... I, I believe we can learn a lot from nature and from showing up in the world in ways that nature teaches us that sustains life. And so if we can look to the elements, and you know, in my last video I talked about seeing that amazing uh, three-dimensional uh, medicine wheel and so as I was sitting, I was surprised by, you know, what I have here in this space. It's amazing, this uh, little waterfall. And as I was sitting by it today, I was, uh, it came into my awareness that it's been one year to the day of the day I had a really amazing experience. Uh, I was in Montana last summer and near, uh, I went to uh, many glaciers in Glacier National Park and had this amazing experience happen. Um, I won't go into that, but I... I was struck by the messages that um, Spirit had showed me a, a year ago that are very present with me today. And um, so, so for today, I want to share with you, whoever you are um, and wherever you are in the world, I want to share two passages. And the first uh, comes from... Amos chapter 5, which was often quoted by Martin Luther King Jr. And I was born on the same date as Martin Luther King Jr. And have, um, I, when I was young, I memorized his speech. And I just so loved his message to the world and the way that he was, you know, imperfect. And yet he had such a conviction um, and a message of hope uh, in situations that often seemed ho hopeless. And he often quoted um, Amos. Um, Amos is one of the uh, minor prophets in the Old Testament. There are those who turn justice into bitterness and cast righteousness to the ground. He who made the Pleiades and Orion, who turns midnight into dawn and darkens day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out over the face of the land, the Lord is his name. With a blinding flash, he destroys the stronghold and brings the fortified city to ruin. There are those who hate the one who upholds justice in court and detest the one who tells the truth. You levy a straw tax on the poor and impose a tax on their grain. Therefore, though you have built stone mansions, you will not live in them. Though you have planted lush vineyards, you will not drink their wine. For I know how many are your offenses and how great are your sins." 
There are those who oppress the innocent and take bribes and deprive the poor of justice in the courts. Therefore, the prudent keep quiet in such times, for the times are evil. See, seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Hate evil, love good, maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Joseph. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion only to meet a bear, as though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light, pitch dark without a ray of brightness? I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. Did you bring me sacrifices and offerings forty years in the wilderness, people of Israel? You have lifted up the shrine of your king, the pedestal of your idols, the star of your God, which you made for yourselves. Therefore, I will send you into exile beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is God Almighty. So without commenting on the meaning of that or the, the, too much of the story of um, Amos, I just wanted to read that um, really actually in honor of um, the work that is still in progress and uh, in honor of the many who have worked to bring justice and to say that there is so much work still yet to be done. And if you are spinning your wheels or if I am spinning my wheels, simply uh, feeling lost in it all, then it's time or simply retreating to the, the rituals that we know or simply waiting for, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say, waiting for a event, savior or whatever. Um, that's, that's not a way forward. But a way forward Jesus taught us about. When he talked, you met the Samaritan woman at the well, the woman, and he said, you know, they have this long conversation. He tells her about this living water. And, and he says, um, you know, well, she says to him in the, after their conversation, this beautiful conversation, she says, I know that a Messiah is coming. And when he comes, he'll explain everything to us. And Jesus looks into her eyes and he says, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. And, uh, and then the disciples confront Jesus and say, like, what are you doing? You know, get out of here. Don't talk to a woman. What are you, you know, you're nuts. <laughs> and the disciples say, you know, Rabbi, eat something. But he says to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. And uh, they're like, what are you talking about? Did somebody bring you food? And he says, you know, like, they clearly don't get it. And he says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And then he says to them, this is from John chapter 4, if you want to read the entire, um, the entire story, um, starting with about verse 35, he says, Don't you have a saying, it is f still four months until harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. And um, so then some really amazing things happen, you know, in, in the Gospel of John. But again, without getting, you know, I know that I can get on a roll there. Because <laughs> I love, I love the Gospel of John so much. But... I think that I, what I want to say there is that this, this living water that Jesus uh, talked about and, and the, the ways that he showed us that the, the fields, you know, look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. And in other words, there is so much abundance here 
for us. And yet, when we, you know, live up in our towers uh, and or avoid, um, avoid uh, the fields and or when we simply are all about the everyday mundane and going through the routines and emotions, that's not enough. And, you know, that's the one thing that has always bothered me about planet Earth (laughs) and in particular humans. And I realize that there's still work for me to do with, you know, um, understanding this lesson and this is what I'm sitting with. But there's a tendency to, you know, live in or what I used to, I used to call it to many people that I would talk to. I was like, what are we doing? What's happening here? Are we just like playing house? Are we just playing church? And are we just, you know, it's like a game of make believe only it's not, it's more like pretense. It's like, we're just all about the, whatever the material or caught up in, you know, our, whatever our problems are of the the day and I'm as guilty as this as the next person so I'm, I'm definitely not speaking to you from some high place here but I, I believe we all need to sit with this and we all need to to understand that we are one people and that we are connected in one light and one life and one love and that means that we don't have time in any community whether it is you know um uh, the community of believers um, who follow are you know Christ followers, or whether it is uh, the the community of the so-called awakened ones, and um, to, we don't have time to sit around and just um, be concerned about um, you know let's get some good food to eat and let's um, let's let's uh let's just put all our our stock in the fact that um you know it's all being taken care of, care of behind the scenes yep it's all okay uh you know even if you um do and i i do believe that actually i do believe that like i said that general premise i actually am on board with it's just that that is not uh, the will of the Father. You know, Jesus says, you know, I am the, I am the truth, I am the way, I am the light, life. And he's talking about this living water. And, and he says so clearly, my food, my nourishment is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And we are called to do the same. And that, you know, that may or may not relate to a particular issue. You know, it's, it's about, you know, whatever your specific creative contribution is. Um, you know, many refer to that as your mission. And, and we do each have a sacred mission. But just because we have a sacred mission or a particular means of expression or a particular... Um, creation that we're meant to bring forward doesn't mean that we get to just ignore the broken hearts of the world and the ones who do not know that there is such a thing as living water. So that's the the first thing I wanted to say. And then the second is just about uh, a follow-on from my last video. is just about, uh, the last two videos actually, is just about this creation power and how um, if we want to be, if we want to be creators of our own experience, then immersing ourselves in the living waters of this life and of spirit, God, the living God is, is a way, it's a, it, it's a way to open up our own creative 
offerings, heart. It's a way to connect to the one heart that we share and to stand in unity with one another. And, and there is a need right now to, I agree there is a need to uh, not allow um, ourselves to be pitted against one another and that takes focused um, intention and it takes a continual reconnection and so be gentle with that that reconnection process reconnecting to the light and the life and the love that you are at your core is the is the most essential thing to do every day and i've uh, really been called in a big way back to that on my own journey uh, i don't want to talk about it too much in this in this uh message but i will at some point and uh and that is supporting me and so do that take that time to heal your heart because that is you know that is ultimately the best gift that you can bring forward for humanity but but as you're doing that i'm just i'm i'm asking that each one of us nourish our lives and send out or hold the vision for that nourishment for those who have yet to discover that living water, who have yet to know, to see hope, to, and that's why, um, you know, whether it is lighting a candle or shining a light in the places that have very little light and where there are many souls still trapped, and that is a part of, of, of my uh, own uh, mission, that's why that is such a powerful thing, and so I believe very, very valid. It's one, one offering that we can make to do that, and at times we are called also to to go out into the fields. I don't think that any of us can say that. Um, Yay, we're on God's team and not open our hearts to the pain and not do the hard work of reconciling within us um, what has, whether through ancestral type, you know, our, our lineage or whether through our own life, and usually it's both, right? Um, where, where we have... Um, perpetuated that division and separation that we are so quick to vocally to uh yeah to to uh, vocally stand against sort to call out right there is a lot of that going on there definitely is i've experienced it myself as i've said um and i also have um witnessed it and i have also am aware that yes there are there are forces out there and uh you know human and, and energetic that are disrupting things uh, and at the same time where I feel that the most healing and grace can come is when we connect to look to the healing streams of nature go back to the the unity that all of us so believe in and the unconditional love that we we believe in and find uh, find ways to bring that creatively in our own expression of that to bring that forward it can be very quiet it can be very solitary sometimes for some people and it can be, at other times, very active. It can be very direct at times. It can be one-on-one -on -one at times. It can be talking about co the collective at times. I just feel it's not a time to hide our light under a bushel. Is that what it is? 
<laughs> that word always confused, confused me in the song that we used to sing. Um, but it is a time to let our lights shine and to speak into, to speak words of life, not condemnation, to bring reconciliation, to, to be a part of the waters of truth and justice. 